Well, hello everyone. My name is Marcus Raven and I want to welcome you to the Baruch Hashem Art Demo Digital Marketing Blueprint 101. That's Digital Marketing Blueprint 101. Now you may be asking yourself, what is a digital marketing blueprint? That is a very good question and as we go throughout this course, I will help you expand or encounter what I mean by a digital marketing blueprint. But I want to give you a little bit of background. First, a little bit of background on myself, and then a little bit of background on how we got here. I am born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas, so I'm a local guy, a Metroplex guy. My undergrad was from UT Arlington in business administration with the emphasis on entrepreneurship, and my master's degree is from Dallas Theological Seminary, where I studied media and communications, and that's really how I got into it. Uh, before working at, or before heading off to grad school at DTS, I worked at the Arlington Chamber of Commerce, where I was the manager of research for economic development, and also I was the director of member services at the time of me leaving there and going to grad school. So. You'll see how that all plays in, but that just gives you a little bit of background. I don't have a formal degree in marketing. I have learned from the school of hard knocks, as most artists do. So why did I go to DTS? Well, I had this grand plan. I had this grand plan. I was going to get a, uh, a master's degree in Christian education, and then I was going to go over to UNT and get a doctorate degree in higher ed so I could come back to the university level and teach the poetic books strictly from communication standpoint and then of course as those spiritual things went out I'd let the Word of God do what it does and not return void but when I got to DTS the Thursday before classes started one of the professors or Dean of Academics talked to me and he heard what I wanted to do and he told me that I need to go meet a professor named Reg Grant and Reg had a degree program that I had not heard of at DTS it was a degree in media and communications which I eventually switched over to and that became my primary track. So how did I start to learn all these things about marketing? Well, for my capstone project, I just wanted to get my spoken word poetry in front of many eyes and ears as I possibly could so I could get more opportunities to speak and to teach. So as I started to research, I was like, how do you get yourself seen on the internet? Because at that time in 2008, 2009, YouTube was still pretty new. It's hard to believe that YouTube was still pretty new back then. So I started researching because I'm, that's what I do. That's what I'm trained to do is research. And I couldn't find anybody who was doing it for artists or musicians or the creative types, but I found a lot of people who were starting to do it for local businesses. So I began to take those strategies and put them to use with people who I knew who had businesses, such as my cousin and my friends. And then I started to remix those strategies so I could use them to my own benefit. So that's a little bit of background about me. Now you say, how do we get here to the digital marketing blueprint? Well, back at the beginning of the year, Kenna and I were having a conversation after we had had a few conversations, and she said, it would be really, really cool if you could help us or show us how to get a YouTube channel up there so we could get our artwork in front of different people. And I laughed because I realized that I had literally come full circle, and here was an opportunity to take everything that I had learned and had been using for local companies and for an international business and actually put them to work for the body. And so here we are. Well, I told Ken, I said, you know what? It really doesn't matter how good your content is on YouTube if nobody ever clicks on it. And so I said, the first part we probably need to tackle on creating a YouTube channel is how to create compelling images that inspire people to click on them. And so, that's where we <laughs> colluded against Gretchen, and we laugh about it now, threw her under the bus, and we created that first part of the series, which many people don't realize that, but that was actually the first part of this multi-part series. And so Gretchen walked you through defeating the white screen and how to create images. If you have not taken the opportunity to watch that video by Gretchen in that training series, I highly encourage you. It is very beneficial, so you will understand how to create images, those thumbnail images that will compel people to click on your videos. Okay, now that we've got that all out the way, now we start to say, but what is it you're talking about that, 
this digital marketing blueprint. In the grand scheme of things, the digital marketing blueprint is a comprehensive system that I've created with some coaches and some friends and some colleagues that shows you how to get your business up and running online without the tech overwhelm. That is beyond the scope of this course right now. And we want to focus, we want to drill down into YouTube specifically and then how to use YouTube to trigger and to gain interest and traffic and an audience through other channels. So then, you know, I started to think about this. Uh, a friend of mine, a friend of mine asked me a question one time. He said, when does marketing start? And I, I don't remember exactly what my exact response was, but I know I gave him this detailed explanation that was pretty textbook, and he promptly replied, wrong. Marketing starts before the product is created. Marketing starts before the product is created. Now, as a creator, man, it kind of rubbed me raw. And sometimes it still does, but I understood what he meant. And since you probably don't have a time machine, like I don't have a time machine, you have to ask yourself, how do you build an effective digital marketing strategy that, resume, that resonates with people who not only like what you do and appreciate how you do it, but are inspired by why you do it? Well, that's why we're here. We're going to talk about the digital marketing blueprint. And so the digital marketing blueprint, and this is 101, the digital marketing blueprint is going to create a comprehensive marketing model that builds out your digital marketing publishing platform, and it's going to help you do it without the tech overwhelm. Now, as I said, this is only one part of a multi-part series. So if we were in business together, I would outline you, I would outline for you the three phases and the nine steps, three steps in each phase on how to go from, from your blueprint to your building to your broadcasting. But right now we just want to focus on the creation phase. We want to look at this broadcasting phase because, as I said, that is the scope of the art demo today. So if you are an artist of any kind, of any kind, if you're an artist of any kind, you are in the right place. Now, you can learn some things from this as a general business owner, but this is an art demo, and so we are specifically speaking to artists. And we're specifically speaking to creating a channel, a YouTube channel, that is. Creating a YouTube channel is one of the most exciting things that you can do. You're basically starting your own entertainment network, your own publishing platform, and you're the CEO, you're the talent, you're the head writer, you're the executive producer, you're the editor, you're even that enthusiastic assistant or intern that has to go get coffee for the kind of quirky, kind of sporadic, sometimes controlling boss. And oh, by the way, you are the boss as well. Now, YouTube has allowed multiple people to go from creators or, you know, barely creating things to wildly successful entertainment moguls with their own television deals and, and things that we could not not have imagined 15 years ago. You know, just for example, there's a guy named Willie Moore Jr., man, and he started out on YouTube putting out channels, and now he's got this deal, and he's been invited to all these shows and he has got his own cable network or his own cable show and it's just success man but success like that could be a double-edged sword for people just getting started on one hand those type of stories offer you extreme hope but on the other hand they are very intimidating very intimidating they put an immense amount of pressure on you to come up with the perfect idea for your channel I want to say right now, let's take that pressure off as we get them ready to go through this series. And we'll talk about this. This will be a three-part series because I didn't feel like I could get it all done in one hour because sometimes I get a long winded, right? That's what we as creators do sometimes. So I wanted to make sure that I broke this up, put it in actionable steps so you could get the most out of it. So, you know, one easy way to, to solve or one of these easy solution for that problem is to simply start a channel based off your own passions and interests. And, and since you are an artist, you're a creator, you already have that, right? It's easy, right? Well, maybe not really, because we might be convinced about uh, we might not be totally convinced, I should say, about which passions are, are worth pursuing. So even if you are confident that your particular passion is worth pursuing, then how can you be positive that it has profit potential, right? And when I say profit potential, I'm not talking about getting rich, but we as artists want to see, we, we gain profit by having people interact with the things that God has put on our hearts to create. And yeah, we get paid with it, and it would be nice to, you know, to, to get paid for our art and then have someone, you know, continue to encourage us with 
the form of profits. So uh, we look at that and you say, even if, even if the obscure interest uh, was a deal breaker, it'd be pretty hard to explain the success of channels like uh, Penitentiary Stories or The Great War or Stella Cheney, right? Or, you know, and you're seeing people do some really, really quirky things as in Penitentiary Stories, these guys are literally ex-cons talking about things that happened to them in the penitentiary and recounting those stories and making light of them. The Great War breaks down like w, uh, World War One week by week, a hundred years later. You're like, is there an audience for that? And then like Stella Cheney, they're, they're dying and styling wigs and hair extensions, but they've got this huge following. <laughs> you know, none of these channels can hardly claim to be on the cutting edge of pop culture. So... <laughs> there's hope. There's hope for me. There's hope for you. So I if you're not sure about what you're passionate about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to help you figure that out. I'm going to come along beside you with this training or with this series and help you figure it out. Even if nothing is jumping to the top of your head right now, uh, when, you, when, when you consider, like, what type of channel should I create, I'm certain you've got some fantastic ideas hidden in your mind. I'm confident of that because you are an artist. And by the end of the session, you'll have multiple ideas to choose from and a bunch of different videos to develop as well. The most important thing to know about picking a topic for your channel is simple. It needs to be something that you are truly interested in. I mean truly interested in. Your interest in this topic will have to have a direct effect. It'll have a direct effect on the successfulness of your channel. And what do I mean by that? You can't just pick something because you think other people are interested in it. You got to pick something that you genuinely enjoy. And that's what I mean by a direct effect. Because when you talk about something that you care about, it shows and people can tell. Your enthusiasm becomes contagious. And isn't that the main element of something going viral? It has to be contagious. All right. So let's not create an, an asymptomatic channel because... Uh, nobody wants to be asymptomatic when it comes to their artwork and going viral, right? Okay, so we all know that, that when we enjoy doing something, it doesn't really feel like work. And even if it does, the most, it's the most re rewarding type of work. How many of us have, you know, we've left our day jobs exhausted thinking we're going to go straight home and eat and, and jump in the shower and get in the bed only to find ourselves up at midnight tweaking the last minute touches on this idea that hit us while we were in the shower Man, I love those brainstorming sessions. I love when I get inspired like that, and I'm sure that you do. So when we actually like doing the thing, it's 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 not a drag. It's not an it's not a drag on, on when we invest the time to do those things. When we care about something, it doesn't feel mundane or laborious, right? We get energized by it, and and this is vital because it will take discipline, it will take determination to build a channel that breaks through the noise and gets noticed. So we want to make a channel about something that you really care about, something that you want to work hard at, but still have it feel like fun. Okay? Are you with me here? All right. So what's the point of making a channel about a topic that you don't care about? I mean, forcing yourself to care about something, uh, that's what happens when you're at your day job and you're dealing with the 9 to 5 bump and grind and you're on the quote-unquote hamster wheel. I mean, why would we do that? It's not the situation we should be in when we're working on a passion product. So we want to get something that we really, really care about. So much of our education in life and, and, and the things we're involved in in life have to do with things that, that are expected of us. But starting our own YouTube channel it's a chance to focus on the talent and the energy. It's a chance to focus on, on those things that really energize us and put them to good use. Are you with me here? All right. Since we're all on the same page, and I know you're like, man, that is a long introduction, but I, I just got to set it. I got to set the stage so you'll understand where we're going. No matter how nuanced your interests are or how they may be, they can help you come up with a great channel idea. The more specialized your channel is, the more successful it could be. Just take a look at all these crazy channels that at first glance seem to be too particular or too peculiar. Would you watch a random kid talk about toys? I mean, random toys, seriously. A whole channel where a kid just reviews toys. And when I say review, I mean he plays with the toys and his commentary is the only the type of commentary that a kid could add. 
Turns out the answer is yes for 20 many million people who subscribe to Ryan's Toys review. Ryan Toys reviews. Now, man, I'm, I know you didn't wake up this morning and say, yeah, like I could watch a guy recreate technologies humans haven't used for thousands of years. That's that's what I that's what I want to do this morning. No, you didn't you didn't wake up and say that. But you can find that on this channel on called Primitive Technology, a channel where a guy tries to recreate ancient technology just for the thrill of it. And I mean, can you believe this? This guy has over 10 million subscribers. Is that wild or what? It, <laughs> right. So you're thinking like that is so quirky. That is so buzz, uh, obscure. That is so bizarre. I'm getting a little tongue tied because like when you think about this, it's almost crazy. But think about this channel here, Bistro Minister, a channel that takes super tiny scraps of food and turns them into uh, miniature gourmet meals that can fit on the tips of your finger. Why? I mean, why? I guess just because they're really, 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 really into miniature things. The meals uh, may be tiny, but their subscriber count isn't. They have over 200,000 followers. Man, that's crazy that people will watch these videos over and over again and continue to watch more and more videos. I, w I wouldn't dare tempt you into becoming a glutton, but, but that, let's take a look at Binging with Babish, or a Babish. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. The channel starts... Uh, the channel stars, I say starts because the start is kind of funny, but the channel stars a chef and a passionate film lover. There's the cross section there, and that's going to become important as we get a little bit further in this. It, it, it stars this guy who's a chef, and he's, pas and he's a passionate film lover, and he creates meals from iconic television and TV shows. He has... <laughs> five million plus subscribers and he was featured in a in a Netflix cooking show and you know and that's crazy so what do all these people have in common besides having thousands or millions of followers they all have creative and compelling content <sighs> that comes from some really random seeming things but the main point is it's their general it's their it's it's not just the generality they are genuinely interested in these things so I'm not saying that you're going to have a million followers overnight. I'm not making that claim. What I want to say, though, is that if you pick a topic that you're genuinely interested in, it means you won't mind putting in the work to realize the breakthrough. Okay? So let's pick something that we're generally interested in. I mean, this is an extension of your creative talent. So we want to feel like, you know, it's a heart racing hobby, not a dirty duty. Right? We want this to be a heart racing hobby, not a dirty duty. So, all right. <laughs> the first action step we're going to do is create our own channel. We're going to figure out what we're passionate about, and we're going to help you, us find our niche. Now you say, I'm already like sculpting. I'm already painting. I'm already, uh, I'm already creating. I'm already lettering, like in the form of calligraphy. I'm already basket weaving. That's fine, you know. Those are good. That's where we want to start. I've also created, for those of us who are not that nuanced yet or who are not that far in our development, I've also created a little questionnaire to help you get started. In it, we're going to examine the skill sets. We're going to examine your interest. We're going to examine the passions that you already have. Your response to these questions will help you figure out what niche that you really, really, really want to run with. No matter what you're into, this questionnaire will help you hone down that niche to focus on. So many people fail to get started. They, wow, it's, it's amazing. They fail to get started because they're not sure about what they're interested in or passionate about. Others that may have a viable passion, but, but they get stuck in neutral because they're scared that it won't work on YouTube. This questionnaire right here, this questionnaire will help you in, and there's a link to it in the, in the description area. This questionnaire will help you discover your passion and narrow them down to give you the best odds of creating like a, a really cutting edge channel that excites you and can entertain others. I know that you may think that this exercise is elementary, very basic, and you're right. You're right. But what I found with working with many businesses and many organizations at the chamber and then in my own consulting practice is that most people have not taken time to do the basics. They haven't mastered the basics. 
And because of that, they don't build a build a solid foundation. So their dreams are shaky and eventually they crumble when too much pressure is placed on them. OK, so as an artist, we don't want to we don't want to be like that. So anything that you build, almost anything that you build is built probably at least three times. The first time it's built in your mind. The second time it's built on some type of paper. And then last but not least, it's built in real life. OK, so just remember, I encourage you to get get it out of your head and get it on paper with this first exercise on identifying your interest. All right. Now, let's take a pause right there. I know this is unique. You know, if we were in the classroom, then we would have a break. So right now you have to hit the pause button and work through these exercises. And I'll be back just as soon as you hit the pause button and start me up again. All right. Just as soon as you hit the play button. All right, now let's move into the next segment, all right? Since you figured out <laughs> what your niche is, you 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 think you're just probably, you know, like a decision away from figuring out what your YouTube channel is, right? Man, you think all you got to do is narrow down your list and choose your favorite topic. I wish it were that easy. I wish it was just as simple as that. But passion alone won't make your channel successful. No matter how specific your niche is, you're probably not the only one who has it. You're probably not the only one who's trying to make a successful YouTube channel in that niche. So you've got to figure out a way to make your channel stand out from the rest without spending a lot of time and energy on things that won't move you forward towards your goal. Instead of reinventing the wheel, though, or the album, if you will, the CD, right? How about remixing the hit, right? This is a method of creating compelling and entertainment content by combining something that you're already passionate about with a proven style that's doing well on YouTube already. So rather than trying to invent something completely new, the remix strategy takes an already viral style, adds your niche, and creates something that's innovative and more likely to be successful. With the, with the remix strategy, you won't have to worry about coming up with a 100% original idea. You modify something and put your fingerprint on it to make it completely your own. And since you're riffing, you know, as in a musical term, since you're riffing on something that's already proven to work, your content will have an even stronger foundation to build upon. And that's important, right? We, we want to build on the shoulder of giants. We want to see what's working and continue to work that. This, this method helps you avoid the daunting pressure of a blank canvas or a blank sheet of paper. Think of it like ice cream, right? Ice cream. The foundation is already something successful. I mean, vanilla ice cream is successful in and of its own, in and of itself, right? But what makes a popular ice cream brand or, or a unique ice cream shop stands out is the unique flavors and the toppings, right? And, and so we, we like stuff like that, right? We like blizzards, right? We like concrete, right? We like when you add those toppings that that just make your mouth water. So all you need to do is to offer something unique in your remix, you know, add something to, to, to the traditional vanilla ice cream ever so slightly. Your personal ingredients, your flavors. Think about it, 99% of the ice cream that, that you eat is just milk, sugar, and eggs. Just milk, sugar, and eggs. That's all it is, right? So we all know the, the, the famous quote, quote, Good artists copy, but great artists steal. Well, since we're redeemed, we definitely are not going to get into the stealing business, but we do want to be great artists. And how can we be great artists? We stay within the Ten Commandments, of course. We're not going to break those com commandments. But we use one of the greatest skills that an artist has, and that's the power of observation. And when we open up our eyes, when we open up our ears, when we open up our senses to the things around us, we see content, good content is everywhere. So we want to observe successful content and add our own look to make it outstanding, add our own voice, add our own unique perspective. This was happening way before the internet. I mean, how many know the game? How many have heard the game? Marco Polo. Well, yeah, we know, we know the game. But did you know that Marco Polo brought back noodles from a trip to China? Then his Italian countrymen mix those noodles with tomato and basil and herbs and here I am today with a big fat belly man I, I mean I like pasta so much that I got married at Maggiano's <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on my wife because it's her favorite restaurant but we do like pasta so so think about that the next time you have spaghetti dinner you're eating a remix 
Man, and no wonder why the leftovers taste so good because they started out with a proven formula already. Of course, when I say remix, I can't I can't help but think about, you know, in the time that I grew up, I can't help think about one of my favorite dramas of music, rap. In the 70s, DJs in New York took their favorite funk, soul, jazz records, man, and they looped them. They looped them. They just put them on repeat, right? They looped them so that so the MCs, the master ceremonies, could add some poetry on the, on the top of the beat. That's what we're going to look at right now. We're going to look at a remix strategy to make your channel even stronger. Have you ever noticed how some of the most popular songs over the last 10 to 20 years have a similar sound? They start with something well known and then they make it their own. You know, they add fun embellishments, they add some some different you know, instruments, they add, you know, something quirky about their voice, just like the vanilla ice cream that I mentioned earlier. I, I'm not suggesting that, that all music is the same, but it, it does have a formula, right? It, if it was easy to create, though, everybody would have a Grammy. I, I'm pointing out the fact that there are patterns to be recognized, and, and if you're gonna, if you're gonna use the remix, if you're gonna use the remix strategy to the fullest, You've got to understand that pattern recognition is essential. It's essential to all artists, not just musicians. Once you can decipher those patterns, then you can leverage them to your advantage. Now, let's see if we can crack the code behind some successful YouTube channels. Think about what you're feeling when you're watching your favorite content. Have you ever been so impressed that you utter these words? How did they come up with that? How'd they come up with that? Right? I used to have a friend. Uh, he, he lives out in Rockwall area, man. And his, his name is Jerry Mix. And when you do something, he, he, he'd say your name, Marcus, how do you do it? Right? And so as, as you watch these episodes and you watch episode after episode, video after video, you see that uh, you see that either lightning is striking twice or thrice, ha, 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 snuck in thrice, in the same spot, or, or they figured out some type of system or formula to keep you engaged and in, in interacting. So... I don't think it's lightning striking, right? I don't think it's something so uncontrollable as that. So let, let's look at the channel. Let's look at the channel, man. Let's, let's take a look at this channel. It, it's called Imaginary Ambition. This channel uses humor and absurd visuals uh, to do tutorials on how to make music ranging from different styles, from rap to jazz to EDM. At first, it, it, you may ask yourself, man, how am I going to come up with something so original like this? The good news is you don't have to. All they're doing is using a remix. Like, you, you can see it. They, they started out with the cooking show format and added their own crazy humor, right? And, and it just, it blends well together. The pattern recognition is a method of reverse engineering to successful content by identifying in simple and repeatable formula. And let me, let me say that again. I got a little tongue tied. Pattern recognition is a method of reverse engineering successful content by identifying its simple and repeatable formula. When you figure out how to look for these patterns, you'll start to notice them everywhere. So when you're watching videos that you really love, slow down and ask yourself, what are the patterns they're following? Then see if you can guess what's going to happen next. Like when we're watching a good movie, we sometimes we're guessing what's going to happen next. Now, the writer will throw a twist in there, right, and create an open loop to keep us in suspense. But these patterns flow, and we're always guessing. They're like, oh, man, I knew that that's what was going to happen. Oh, man, that caught me off guard. So, like, I, I, let, I pulled together a list of, like, 20 different YouTube channels with distinct patterns. And, and I've added some descriptions in, in this list to keep you started. I want you to take your own notes just to see if you can recognize the patterns within each channel. You know, like some channels have multiple patterns embedded within them. This is training. This is allowing you or giving you the opportunity to develop this skill set. Now, I know you may not be interested in all of these channels or even any of these channels. But this is an exercise in observing and dissecting. It's important to go through them so you can develop this particular skill of observation. And the better you recognize these patterns, the better you become in pattern recognition, the better you will become in placing your fingerprint on all of your work, your distinct pattern, the pattern that God gave you. After you watch 
in each video, notate the patterns, and, and let's see, you can cross-check the answers, right, or some of the suggestions that I've put in. And you, you may find patterns that I have not found yet. It's, it's, not, it's not that case that I am the owner and the gatekeeper of all patterns. But please, please, please don't rob yourself of this wonderful opportunity if you, because, because if you do, like, it, it, it's like building a skyscraper on a chicken coop foundation, and, and we don't want to do that. The old proverb says, if you find yourself going in circles, then stop cutting corners. All right, this is the time right now to stop cutting corners and let's put in some work. All right? All right, so download that and start looking for patterns. Okay? Like, I know. I know, I know, I know. You could be asking yourself, man, are patterns really that important? Like, is it really that big of a deal? I think it is. Hopefully, after this exercise, you'll be able to prove it to yourself. It's time for you to search out some patterns. Yep, it's time for you to search out some patterns from YouTube channels in your chosen niche. Now, this action step has multiple benefits. It's a chance for you to scope out your future competition while you study how they apply patterns and, and then riff on your niche in general so you can get plenty of inspiration for your own original ideas. Not to mention the ideas you can borrow from and use to your advantage. You may find some diamonds in the rough that they have missed. We know the interwebs are vast. So how do you find these other channels? Well, you ask my favorite research assistant. Google. <laughs> that's right. It's time to Google, right? You're like, wow, man, that's profound. Don't miss it. So let's say, right, you like playing the guitar. So if you Google guitar channels on YouTube, now remember, we are in Google. We're not in YouTube. If you Google guitar channels on YouTube, you'll start to see that video examples pop and articles appear and things that you may not have considered. This is easy. This is easy and it's also more comprehensive than searching within YouTube first because you can see which channels have gotten the most attention uh, on the biggest search engine in the world right and that's a good starting point now once you do find a channel that you like be sure to sort the videos by popularity we want to go over here on the right hand side and sort the videos by popularity that way you can see which videos have gotten the most traction now here's a killer growth hack. This is a little secret trick that I picked up from marketing products on Amazon when I worked with a company that distributed baby products. Read through the comments and find out what people like and don't like about the video. Those comments will help you see the strengths and the weaknesses as well as the opportunities and the threats that you should consider when you're creating your own content. They will allow you to see the questions that people have, the things that resonate with them, and the things that people really don't care about. Of course, you're going to see trolls and all that stuff, but don't worry about all of that. I want you to mine through this content so it will help you. After you click through and watch a few videos in your niche on YouTube, uh, YouTube will start suggesting other relevant videos because they realize that you have an appetite for that type of content. It may sound very, very simple, and it is, but it works. So Google first, then YouTube second. Another growth hack that we'll implement a little bit later once we have our channel set up is to go back to those channels, right? Make sure you're signed into that actual YouTube account that will become your channel or that is your channel, and then you want to start to browse through those things because you want YouTube to associate your channel with those search results. So eventually, when you start creating really, really good content, YouTube will start to put you in the suggested videos and put you in the play box, okay? That's another little growth hack. So now, if you want to take it a little bit further, now go into YouTube and type best guitar channel or guitars. That way you're getting a large number of channels that you can study from. It's much harder to make a splash in a niche if you don't know how big that body of water is, right? It could be a pond, it could be a pool, right, a pool, it could be a lake, but, you know, ultimately we want the biggest body of water it is, but we don't know how big a splash we can make if we don't know how big the body of water is, all right? And that's, what's the point of doing this if we're not going to make a big splash, all right? So your next action step is to find 15 channels in your niche and identify the patterns that they use. 
be sure now be sure to take detailed notes because those notes will come in handy later right this is serious work it's time to get to work and even after you've you've locked down your niche and discovered the 15 channels and their patterns you're not done yet okay your next step is going to be combining your niche with the 15 channels that you've just analyzed, okay? By adding your own angles to these pre-existing patterns, you'll know how, you're like, you'll have 15 different channel ideas, right? You can see how this is starting to grow. And then once you add your own creativity, you become an innovator in your niche, and people will start to see you as a thought leader. People will start to see you as, a, as that person to look to for new and fresh ideas. But wait, there's more. Yeah, I, I like saying that, right? I watched a little too much TV growing up. Once you have your 15 channel ideas, go ahead and brainstorm three episodes for each idea. That's right. Three episodes for each channel idea. I know that sounds like a lot. You're right. It is. It's a lot. But this will set you up for long-term success and keep you going when the day-to-day -day grind starts to wear on you, right? So this, like, this is the creative content and we're pulling it all together and we're getting as much inspiration, if you will. We're getting as much motivation as we possibly can before we start out on this grand adventure. All right. OK, by now you should have a good idea on how other people are using patterns in their YouTube videos, especially those within your niche. But what about, what about life outside of your niche, right? Are people using patterns there too? Well, I know that's, <laughs> that's kind of a rhetorical question because I've been spending the last 10 to 15 minutes talking about patterns in different niches. But we should, we should, we should, we should branch out a little bit. We should, we should study what people with totally different channels from, 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 from ours are doing too. Some of the most successful channels on YouTube have become so because they have taken patterns that were foreign. They were totally foreign to, to their established niche. They were doing something. They were breaking a mold. Remember Marco Polo? Hey, how about we consider traveling to the far, far shores of YouTube to make our own pattern recognition remix exploration? Yes. <laughs> so here's your action step. Find at least 15 channels outside of your niche and write down the patterns that you notice. Just because they're outside of your niche does not mean that they have to be channels that you like or channels that bore you one way or the other. Find something different. Find something that will pique your interest and explore them. They should be distinct. Each one should be distinct. Why? Because you may see a pattern that you've never seen before or ever have taken the time to document or think through. If you've never seen it before, there may be a good chance that no one within your niche has used some of its most effective elements. This may sound like a huge deal. I mean, how hard is it to mix things together and come up with something unique? I submit to you that it, it could become very difficult, right? I also submit to you that if you become that person, if you are that artist that starts to do this, then you elevate from artist to alchemist, right? You start to turn lead into gold. All it takes, all it takes is one successful remix to create a successful channel. So don't just study 15 channels in one niche, right? Don't just go all the comedy or all the cooking, right? Aim to study 15 different channels in 15 different niches. So look at toys, look at sewing, look at anything that you could possibly think of. But let's just try to, let's try to get as much variation, as, as much uniqueness as possible. Why? Because it's going to help us. So now go find those 15 other channels and give them a good study. Remember, any interesting idea, no matter how big or small it is, has the potential to be something grand when you remix it. All right? So now, once you have those 15 channels with 15 patterns, it's time to combine them with your niche. So now you have 15 new ideas for your channel. Then you want to look at the top five, the top five ideas in there, right? And you want to start brainstorming. And when you brainstorm, you want to think of three episodes from each of that, right? Three episodes from the top five. So then you should have 15 episode ideas, okay? All right, so don't skip this. Please don't skip this. If you do, you run the risk on missing out on some amazing opportunities. Think back to the widow 
and her sons collecting those empty jars. The oil kept flowing as long as there were jars to fill. They had enough money to pay off their debts and to live off, live off of. You know, but I often, I often wonder, right? I often ask myself, what would have happened if they had not stopped but continued to collect more and more and more jars, right? So let's collect those jars, right? And see how the oil continues to flow. Once you complete all the steps, you'll have 30 channel ideas, 10 top picks, and 30 episode ideas, okay? All right, so now we're going to move into our next segment. Okay, okay, okay. Let's look and see how far we've come since we first started. When we first started, you may have only had a few vague ideas and a nebulous desire to create your digital marketing blueprint, right, and your digital marketing strategy. But by leveraging these simple, effective strategies, now you understand what most people have not even realized or can articulate if they have. In addition to that, you have 30 unique channel ideas of your own. Now we have a different issue, a different set of challenges. I like to say figuring out how to pay taxes on a million dollars is a good problem to have, right? You can't pursue, you can't develop 30 channel ideas no matter how spectacular each and every one of them are. So we've got to figure out a way to find the best and move forward, all right? Now there's no scientific method to determine with absolute cer certainty which one is the one, right? So take a look at your top 10. See which one is jumping out, of, jumping out at you, right? See which one is making your heart just pound. See which one is getting you excited. See if you could take a few minutes and quickly come up with five or more episodes for that idea, for that channel idea. If you can, then you've probably got a solid idea to move forward with. Now, if you're one of the people that need a little bit more help, you know, trying to find a potential winner, here are three additional steps, all right? First, ask yourself how passionate are you about the specific channel that you're considering? That's the first thing you ask yourself. Is it something that you're really excited about? If it is, then put a three, right? Rank it as a three. If it's just an idea that you think other people would like and it doesn't really speak to your passions, then go ahead and cross it off the list right now. We don't have time for that. Well, ain't nobody got time for that. We don't want to do something that's just good. We don't even want to do something that's, that's better than good. We want to do the best, okay? Now, we may not know that with absolute certainty right now. The second thing like we, we want to do is we want to look at the channel ideas and ask yourself how easy would they be to film and produce, okay? So, for example, if one of your ideas is to incorporate animation, you know, or anime with macrame, right? You should probably cross that off your list unless you're an animator, right? Or unless you have an animator who is willing to work with you for the long run. You only want to pick a channel and, I, you know, you only want an idea that you can actually make and maintain at your current skill level. At your current skill level, right? That's key. That doesn't mean that your channel won't be able to evolve, but evolution is just that. It's something that's growing from something that already started, right? It, it, it's just like if you've got to develop a whole new skill set before you can even get started, then that means your channel can never get started. So that's not what we want to do. We want something that's within our current skill set. And then as we grow, as we develop new skills, then our channel will grow too. Now, the last of the three of the criteria that we're looking at to help us, you know, hone in on our channel is how popular is the original channel that you're remixing, right? Now, you can base this on a very simple metric. How many subscribers do they have? If they've got over a million, then that's fantastic. But if that original channel has less than 50,000, then it's going to be pretty tough to gain the popularity that you need in order to remix it, right? And then, of course, if you still don't have a clear winner, then use your gut, right? Trust, trust what God has given you, what he's put into you, the vision that he's dropped into you, right? And, and if you don't feel butterflies about it or if you don't want to immediately go out and call your best friend or your wife or your husband and tell them, then that's a good sign that it's probably not the right one. So let your enthusiasm help you narrow down your options. You may have to refine, you may have to, you know, further define that idea that you choose or you may even have to pick another one. That's okay, right? We don't have to get it perfect on the first attempt. Remember, ditch diggers are the 
only profession that start at the top. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so the most important thing we can do now is to get started. In this situation, learning is on the other side of doing. Let me repeat that. Learning is on the other side of doing. So let's get to doing so we can start learning. All right, now in this next segment, <laughs> which is a pretty important segment, right? Because it's the next to the last segment in this series for this weekly series. And it's, uh, it's naming the, your channel, right? Before you create your own channel, you know, it's important that we name it. Now, this may sound like a very, very big deal, but don't worry. <laughs> it's not a name that you have to stick with forever. You can refine it. You can, you can massage it. You can change it when needed as your channel becomes stronger. But let's come up with a decent name for now. It, it just has to be decent because you can change it at any time in the future. Trust me, you can change it at any time. So don't overthink it. As a matter of fact, unless you already have an established brand, I suggest that you go with something basic, something easy to identify. After all, right now, we're just using this as a glorified placeholder. So, you know, like your first option is your name, right? So in my case, my channel name would be Marcus Raven. The second option would be like your name plus a verb, right? Marcus Raven Cooks, right? And so if that doesn't get you right, then you could go to like the random word generator. It's a website called the random word generator and, and, and find some words that you may not have thought of, right? And come up with something totally new, like mash that up with your name, mash that up with the type of art that you do and come up with a brand new name, right? You know, what was Google before Google, right? It wasn't, right? It's a brand new name. So let's brainstorm on three to five potential names. Decide which one you like the best and make it your channel name for now. Remember, it's just for now. You can always change it. And, right, trust your gut. Phone a friend. But most importantly, don't waste too much time. So let's go ahead and knock that out right now. All right, now we are <laughs> we're coming to the end of this first session, and you are 15 minutes away from having your own YouTube channel. Yeah, that's a good accomplishment for our first series, for the first part of this series. I'm going to walk you through every step of this process so your channel is up and running like tonight, okay? First, you need a Google account. If you don't have a Google account, you cannot set up a YouTube channel, okay? So go ahead and set that account up, right? I might have should have told you that at the beginning, but you can always pause. You can set that up. All right, so pause the video if you need to. I'll be right here. Okay, now you're going to go ahead and create your YouTube account. So you want to navigate to YouTube and click your username at the top right-hand corner. Go down to YouTube Studio Beta. As you can see, uh, this account doesn't have a YouTube channel yet, so they're asking, what do you want to use YouTube as? Okay, so we want to set this up and don't get wrapped around the axle. I'm, I'm probably going to create another video to supplement this one about creating a brand, right? So for right now, just use your name, okay? That's all we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to use your name. We can transfer it over to a brand account later. That's exactly what I did with the BHS YouTube channel. I set it up first, and then I came over and migrated it to a brand account. And we'll tell you the, the significance of that later. But right now, just set it up like that. Now, there are a few other things that you want to do to make your channel look nice. The first thing you want to do is customize the channel and add some channel artwork. Now, don't spend a ton of time on this because it's just the initial channel artwork. It's another placeholder. We want it to be a good placeholder, but it does not have to be t perfect. Please do not spend more than 15 minutes on this. So you want to go to canva.com, canva.com, that's C-A-N-V-A dot com, and create an account if you don't, don't already have one. Once you're signed in, you're going to go over here on the left-hand side and search for YouTube channel art. All right? Click there. All right? Here, you can see all the different channel art that you can choose from. There are templates for you to choose from. Once again, don't get bogged down during this step. Pick a template that catches your eye, and let's roll with it. Okay? Select it right there. Put your channel name in that placeholder text, right? All right, now that you've got that in there, Click the download button, all right, on the top right-hand corner over here, and download it as a JPEG. That's a JPEG. Don't download it as a PNG. Download it as a JPEG file. Now, you want to go back to channel, click channel art, 
select the photo from your computer. All right. Now, since you use this template, right, this pre-made template from the YouTube channel art, everything should fit perfectly. Now, if for some reason that it doesn't, just go right down here to the bottom left-hand corner, use the adjust, uh, adjust the crop button, put it in the place that you want to be, and there you go, voila. Next, you're going to add a photo of yourself or your logo, and actually, you don't even have to do that, but go ahead and do it now when you add this photo it may take a little time for you to see this change to take effect don't don't worry about that Google is notoriously slow on updating some things and this is one of those things all right if you don't have a photo of yourself you know, like if, if you don't have a logo that you want to use don't worry about that just create an image with the black background or with the color of the black ground that complements your cover art image use the initials for your channel right with the font of your choice and now you've got a little quote unquote logo keep it simple remember don't spend a lot of time on this next you want to click this little pencil up at the top right hand corner where your channel art is and select edit links all right you want to update your channel description put something in there really fast really furious don't spend too much time on this okay next you want to add your real email address just in case someone wants to contact you okay that's what you want to do from there okay below you'll see custom links that you can add to your other social media accounts if you have those go ahead and set them up right now if you not you can if not you can always come back and do it later remember though you want those to be links to your branded social media accounts like your brand accounts you don't want those going to your personal accounts unless your personal accounts is what you use on a daily basis right if that's where you tweet from if that's where your IG account is from if that's where your Facebook page is but ideally you want to set up branded accounts for all of those okay if you don't have them set up don't worry about it we'll do that later okay guess what <laughs> your channel is up that's the end of session one I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today as we started out the digital marketing blueprint 101 all right this is specifically for our artist right because we want to make sure that as you create wonderful art that you can get it in front of as many people that need to see it that want to see it that should see it okay so this week what what did we do right we built what we call the blueprint right so this is the blueprint next week and next week we'll be starting on what we call the build the builds portion portion right so first we blueprint then we build and then we broadcast okay so next week we'll be going into another set of topics to show you what what yes how to create those wonderful videos that you've done all that hard work researching on it if you have any questions please put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to try to respond to those questions before we post the next video. And maybe I may even address some of those questions in the next video. Okay, so have a wonderful evening uh, and enjoy your time with your new channel on your new YouTube creation. All right. Shalom.